surface area and volume of cones. Now, in two chapters ago, we discussed about plane shapes and we also mentioned, we looked at cones. Okay, but we didn't solve much examples. But we explained the area of a cone to be pi r l plus pi r squared and the volume as 1 over 3 pi r squared h. Okay? We also explained the cone to be a cuboid, sorry, a cylinder divided into three parts. The middle part gives us the cone. Okay? So that's why the volume is 1 over 3 pi r squared h. Then the area is the area of the base which is the circle times the area of this sector which is pi r l okay don't forget that now let's take further examples but some of our examples why we would like to leave this chapter to this point is that it will involve pythagoras theorem to solve because a cylinder as we know has a triangle inside so let's say this is a cylinder This is a slant height and this is a height giving us the right angle. So let's say we have a cylinder. Here it's 4 cm and the radius is 3 cm. And we're told to calculate the area of the cylinder, of the cone. So the area as we know it is the area of the base, pi r squared plus the area of the sector, this upper part of the cylinder, which is pi r l. So pi r squared will give us 22 over 7 times the radius 3 times 3 then plus pi 20 over 7 times the radius 3 times L but we don't know what L is. How do you find out? We use Pythagoras theorem because this is a right angle triangle. So we now have 3, 4 and here equals 5. We don't have to do any calculation. We already know this. So 3, 4, 5. So when we break this down and solve it, we'll gets the area of the cone okay now let's look at another example we have a cone that, that looks like this he has a radius of 5 cm and the height of 12 cm and we are told to calculate its slant height and also the area so to calculate to find the slant height which is this is Pythagoras theorem so we have it as 5 squared plus 12 squared we give us the slant height squared so 25 plus 144 25 plus 144 will give us 169 Called to slant height squares and the slant height equals one square root of 169 which is 13 so we have here is 13 and the area is now pi r squared plus pi r l so our pi is 22 by 7 our radius is 5 squared and plus 22 by 7 plus pi r sorry pi r l times radius which is 5 then times the slant height, which you've solved as 13. So once we break this down, we'll find the total area. Now let's take another example. We have a figure that looks like this, and we're told that this sector of a circle is folded to form a cone. I will find the radius of the base of a cone. So imagine folding this figure, this sector of a circle, into a cone. Once we fold it into a cone, we find out that this radius of a cone automatically becomes a height. Okay? So we are told to find the radius of the cone, which is this. Now, how can we find the radius of a cone? We don't know this height, so we cannot use Pythagoras theorem to calculate it. Now, let's go about it this way. When we study the sector of a circle, we are told that the distance around a sector equals pi over 360 times 2 pi r. Now, why did I think of using this? Whenever I am given a math um, problem to solve, we are given this 
angle here. Now that tells you that the examiner, the person has said the question, wants you to think about that angle, apply it. So that's why I didn't really think much of Pythagoras theorem because seeing that angle 216 degrees tells me that the person has said the question wants me to use it. Okay, so it's easier to think in the direction of this pi over 360 times 2 pi r. So now we want to find this perimeter or the second phase of this sector. It automatically gives us the perimeter of the base of this cone, which, as we know, it equals 2 pi r. So we cannot say that this equals 2 pi r. So now let's use this to calculate the perimeter or the general of the sector. And that gives us 216 over 360 times 2 pi r. Okay, so our r here is 10 cm. So that gives us 216 over 360 times 2 times 22 over 7 times 10. Okay. So let's divide. So we have 216 times 2 times 22 times 10 divided by 360 and divided also by 7 will give us that 7.71. So this will give us that 7.71. Okay as the distance around this. Now this 37.71 equals on this other side 2 pi r. So it equals 2 pi r. Okay, so our r will now be 37.71 divided by 2 pi. Okay, we we'll give us the radius. So let's do that. So which is this answer from our last calculation divided by two, then divided by two into seven, which is pi, divided by into over seven, and that gives our r as gives us as six. So our radius, the radius of this cone. Now is equal to equal to six cm. Now another problem I told to find is in this cone, find the curved surface area of the open cone. So the curved surface area is this area. Now how do you find it? Using this, we know that the curved surface area equals pi r l, which is 22 pi r l, which is 22 over 7 times radius we found as 6 times slant height 10. Okay, so when we solve this out, we'll find, we'll get the answer, which is 22 divided by 7, sorry, 22 divided by se 7 times, sorry, 22 divided by 7 times 6 times 10 equals 188.57. So that gives us 188.57 as our final answer.
Now I want you to click on start quiz and answer all the questions following.